if you're still keeping us company, they're moving away from matters of family where we've been advised to talk to your children and not at them. Now we shift gears and focus on matters of COVID-19. The Ministry of Health has told us that Kenya is riding the third wave. But what does this mean? So we're looking and rather we're interrogating the state of COVID, the vaccine and the new variant. Taking us through this conversation this morning is none other than Professor Walter Jalko, a vaccine expert, a leading research scientist and virologist, director at Kavi Institute of Cl uh, Clinical Research at the University of Nairobi. Quite a title there. It's good to have such a profile because we need to get the facts right. From where you sit, maybe let's just start from where you sit, you know, being within that value chain. Mm -hmm. Where are we in as far as COVID-19 is concerned? Kenya, where are we? So much has been said. Okay, so Kenya is in a precarious position, I should say. Uh, you've heard about us being in a third wave. Um, so when COVID-19 uh, hit Kenya last year, we, the numbers kept on rising and we had a peak in uh, August last year. With the measures in place that uh, the government advocated, we were able to control it. It came down and then in November we had what you call a second uh, wave and it picked up and then we've been able to control it. But now in March, again, the numbers are going up. So we're not in a good position. Mm. Wow, we are not in a good position. No. But there's been some hope, a glimmer of hope in regard to the stemming, you know, the spread of COVID-19 and it comes with the rollout of the vaccine. We've seen government is already doing this within the devolved units. As we are doing this, mm -hmm. Questions of ef efficacy have come up with this particular vaccine. What is your take? Okay, so efficacy is tested in what you call a clinical trial. So that, there is no doubt about that. We already know that the vaccine that are being rolled out are efficacious. So clinical trials have shown about 76% of the people vaccinated uh, produce uh, some responses that protects them from getting severe disease preventing them from being hospitalized, preventing them from getting into intensive care unit, and preventing them from dying. And that is the essence of uh, this vaccine. So there is good news. So that is not being tested. I have had people confusing the issues of rollout of vaccine with testing of the vaccine. The vaccine is not being tested. Mm -hmm. But remember, when the vaccine was tested, is in thousands of people. So this particular AstraZeneca vaccine was tested in 40s of thousands of people. Once you find that it is efficacious, it's now rolled out and it's going to be used by millions of people. So where you are now using it into a very large population, you also gather in, uh, more information as to whether there is any additional side effects that was not seen when it was being tested. But you are not testing the vaccine. We are rolling it out. Oh, yeah. That is very good for, you know, for clarity because mm -hmm. so much has been said and there's been a lot of anxiety and concern given that, let's give for, take for example, over the last one week, we've had uh, various states, uh, mm -hmm. Denmark, Australia, stopping the rollout because you know, of adverse side effects as, 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 as it is. So now, are we going to wait until we get to that point or... Do we still continue with the rollout? Maybe we'll not, as Kenyan population, will not react the way the rest have. How do we balance that? How do we go about it? Okay, so this is important. Uh, it is important that for people to realize this, that life goes on with or with no vaccine. People would get infections, people would get conditions with or with no vaccine. So when a vaccine has been given to somebody, it is not that everything that happens to that person is because of the vaccine. So the duty of the people we call regulators are when such an incident occurs is to try and tease out is it vaccine related or not vaccine related. And it is the duty of those bodies to investigate. So now this has happened in Europe. In Europe, the drug regulatory authority there is a body called European Medicines Agency. And so they have looked at the evidence uh, that has been presented to them with these cases that have been described. And EMA, they're called EMA, they have said to date preliminary investigations show that these are not vaccine related. Now the problem we have, especially with uh, people, once you link something that is not related to the vaccine to it, everybody believes it is related to it. So my advice would be, 
it is good to monitor and to see because as I said, when the vaccine was tested in thousands of people, there might have been some things that were not seen just by the sheer a few numbers. Now it's being given to millions. Remember that that same AstraZeneca that now we are saying is associated with clots has been given to millions and millions of people. Mm -hmm. And so we need to just be careful when it happened to investigate and come out with the truth. Is it related to the vaccine or not related to the vaccine? Mm -hmm. The preliminary investigation from the European Medicines Agency is that it is not related. True. Thank you for that clarification. And we're talking about the vaccination exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had government quarters, including the Ministry of Health, coming out and saying, if you have particular conditions, well, they're told, you need to chill out. <laughs> you, you don't have to take this vaccine because of other issues. And so from where you sit, and I'd want to know, you know, having you on here, it's, mm -hmm. we are looking for facts. Mm -hmm. So who, in your estimate, or who, from your understanding, should take you know we've been told people who are overweight we have people who are allergic to eggs and you know such so who should mm. okay that's that's a good question because i think we need to clarify things i, I think um it's not true that people who are overweight should not be given the vaccine there are basically three groups mm -hmm. that um uh, we say at the moment should not be given the vaccine and there's a good reason for that one are uh, pregnant women to uh, women who are breastfeeding. Why are we saying that they should not be given the vaccine? It's because the studies that were conducted did not include pregnant women, it did not include women who are breastfeeding. So we have no evidence as to whether the vaccine would have some any effect on the developing baby inside the mother's womb or whether uh, a breastfeeding mother might be able to pass through the milk uh, things to the, unborn ch to the breastfeeding child who we have not studied, so we are not able to say confidently yeah. that uh, this vaccine should be given to these people. So that is one group. Number two are people with very severe allergies, very severe allergy, and this is not new. I'm sure you many times you go to see a doctor before they prescribe, yeah. they ask you, are you allergic to yes. something? Mm -hmm. This is something, it's a good practice for doctors, good practice for medical practitioners to ask. So what we know, there is a very severe allergic condition and it is called anaphylaxis, where there are people who can react uh, very severely to certain things. And these are the people we are talking about. And I would want to assure uh, your viewers that people with severe allergies, it's not you being told, you know it. You already you know, already know it. Yeah. So you, you should know that you usually have very severe allergy. One time you have reacted very badly to eggs or you have reacted very badly to a, uh, a sting by a bee or a wasp, so you know it. So it's not, if you never had those ones, you don't need to worry at all. Go and get your vaccine. Because <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of talk um, <laughs> when, uh, you know, the first batch uh, got to the country and, mm -hmm. you know, oh, they're mm -hmm. waiting until they see what happens to the rest of the people. Right. So as far as they're concerned, they're not taking they're not eggs yes. so that they can, you know, just yes. delay that process. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that okay. clarification. Okay. You had said three groups. Is this the pregnant women, lactating mothers, and persons with severe, Se severe allergies? Or severe, severe allergies. allergies. Now, allergies yeah. now that we've already established, so it is open uh, for all who do not fall in this yes. category. Mm -hmm. Hmm. There's the issue of, you've said, uh, the efficacy mm -hmm. is legit, is on point. Yes. And this is not a test it's when you're doing the vaccination. No, no. Someone asked a question. Mm -hmm. So, if I get this vaccine, mm -hmm. does it mean I get immunity? Mm -hmm. Can I still get, re uh, uh, can I get reinfected? Can I still spread COVID to my family members? And the answers were yes, yes, yes. So why should I take the vaccine? Okay, so the vaccine is, is like this. Eh? And um, it's, it, it makes sense that people are scrutinizing a COVID vaccine in these details, and that is good. But we also forget that COVID vaccine is not the first vaccine that we have made. The questions we are asking have been asked 
and they are similar to all the other vaccines. So for example, I'll give you a question, uh, uh, an example. Children are vaccinated against measles vaccine, uh, measles disease. So as a child vaccination, a child is uh, given a measles vaccine. But we all know parents will tell you of children who are vaccinated but still got measles, okay? Yes. The difference is that the measles that the children got after vaccination was a mild measles. Unlike the measles that they would have gotten before vaccination, they would have gotten very severe measles. Uh, measles can cause blindness in children. Measles is a very, it can cause death in children. So once your child has been vaccinated uh, against measles, you know that one, they might be protected. So there are many children who don't get measles after vaccination. But two, you know that even if they get measles, it will be mild. Now that is the case with the COVID vaccine. The COVID vaccine hopefully will protect you from becoming infected. But in the event that you become infected with the COVID virus, it will make it mild. What does that mean? You'll get a mild COVID, you will not require hospitalization, you will not require oxygen, because that is what is a big problem for COVID uh, patients. You will not require to go to an ICU. It will protect you from getting severe disease that leads to death. Mm -hmm. okay? So those are the advantages of getting a COVID-19 vaccine. Thank you for that clarity. Now, there's some among us. I firmly believe that a majority of Kenyans have mm -hmm. at one point gotten infected with COVID by one way or another. Either the diet, their immunity, we survived. You know, without just, you confused it as a flu and such, and life went, went on. Those people who were asymptomatic, and now they take this vaccine, mm -hmm. what exactly happens to their bodies, you know, in as far as antibodies and such, you know, immunity? What happens? Do they, is it boosted or what? Mm. I'd want to understand, you know. Okay. Yeah, that's an interesting observation. Uh, it's possible that some people have been infected uh, with COVID causing uh, virus and uh, they are not aware of it. We don't know how much these are. We don't know whether there's a small proportion or there are many people. Uh, but then the question we ask ourselves is what happens to them? We know for sure that when you get COVID, you can get another attack of COVID because the antibodies the immunity that is produced is not lifelong. It lasts for a very short period of time. So we know people who have been infected twice. I personally have a friend who has been infected twice. The first one was light. Uh, the second one was very severe. So we know that you cannot rely on the fact that you've had COVID before to say that now you're protected. That is not true. It is for that reason we say that even if you've had COVID before and recovered from it, you should still be given the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, um, there's the issue about um, the involvement of our own local researchers. And articles have been written both on mainstream media and social media saying that Africa is totally reliant on the West when it comes to fight against COVID. Mm -hmm. From where you sit as a virologist and you know matters of research and science, have we been fully incorporated in uh, the process of coming up with this vaccine? One especially that is being used on us. Okay, so this, um, that's a very wide uh, issue um, that uh, sometimes I think that people are just not being fair or honest with themselves. Eh? Uh, Africa has been involved. So for example, the COVID-19 um, vaccine that is being rolled out in Kenya, you know that uh, one of the sites that participated is Kilifi. Uh, the other site is in South Africa. So those sites are led by African scientists uh, themselves. But I also think that uh, African governments um, need to realize that uh, research is expensive, research requires money, and they need to put uh, their money where their mouth is. Many times you see politicians talking about, oh, why don't we have our own vaccine? This is a vaccine that has been developed from the West. But if you ask those uh, politicians themselves how much money they have put into research in their respective countries, and you'll find it is zero. So you can't expect researchers in African countries to conduct research and come up with products when you're not putting money into research. Research is expensive. So unfortunately, a lot of research 
in Africa and other developing countries is funded by people from the West. But beyond that, I think there's a bigger fundamental issue. I wonder why people don't ask ourselves, why don't we have our own aeroplanes? Why do we fly Boeing? Why do we fly Airbus? Why doesn't Africa have its own aeroplanes? Why don't we have our own phones? We're relying on Japanese phones and so on. So the question is bigger than just coming to health and saying, oh, that Africa has to develop its own thing. The, 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 the issues are so complex. The infrastructure, the finances, the technical know-how, it's beyond just saying, Africa, get your own vaccine. Mm -hmm. Africa, get your aeroplane. Now, when you're talking about Africa getting its own solutions, and I want to take you back to, you know, talk around, uh, you know, after we confirmed our first case in March mm -hmm. and the weeks after. Mm -hmm. So much was said. People started making up their own conclusions. Oh, Warubaini and the garlic and the whatnot. And even people were making fun and saying that this virus has come to the wrong continent. Well, so it has come to the wrong country. Mm -hmm. And as far as research, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for local concussions, we've had different countries even coming up with their own drinks, you know, and even some buying from them, like Ghana took their own consignment there. Research to, you know, local solution for local problems. How far have we come? And is it going a long way to actually also stem the spread? Because if you look at the numbers, uh, the numbers that we have posted in Africa, or even just look at the Kenya, with the exception of South Africa, which I do not understand. Maybe you let us understand. What, mm. You'll make us, you know, just understand why South Africa has taken a hard hit in Africa if you look at the numbers. Our local solutions, has research been put into, or are we doing enough to just look at, maybe is it because of um, the climate or is it because of our diet mm -hmm. what because that's a question that yeah. we've asked since we confirmed we did COVID. it has been asked yeah so there are many issues that uh, nobody really knows for sure but there is some scientific uh, basis for for different um, arguments uh, against why africa has not been as badly hit uh, and for each of those arguments, there's also a counter argument. So, for example, the weather. We've said that uh, because Africa is warm, uh, the virus does not stay in the environment longer than it does in the places that are cold because of the different uh, temperatures. But we also know that there are some other countries like South, Africa, South America, which also has very warm weathers. And yet we see Ecuador, we see Brazil, we see Mexico heated very hard. So it doesn't fully explain that. The other thing is that there is a vaccine that we give children that protects them against tuberculosis. It's called BCG. Probably Africa is the largest consumer of BCG because of TB being a problem here. And uh, people have thought that probably that vaccine, in addition to giving you some level protection against TB, also protects you from getting COVID. But that's a theory. There are some people who are doing studies at the moment to try and find out if that is the case. The other thing is uh, that uh, probably as in Africa we are exposed to many viral diseases and this has helped to boost our immunity to a certain level, partial immunity, not full immunity. And so therefore probably when we get into contact with uh, COVID uh, causing virus, our body has some level of immunity. Uh, the other one is our young population. We know that the elderly are the ones who get very severe disease. Uh, the younger people tend not to have severe disease. Now, you know Africa is a young continent. The average age is about 19 years in Africa. So therefore, it is also possible that just by virtue of having a very young population, yes. Africa has been spared from getting very severe disease. Now, all these are research questions and we need to answer them. When it comes to the concussion, it's good to have a concussion, but it's good to test that concussion. Now, the problem we have in Africa, we are very suspicious, I think. Uh, when you have a concussion... Oh, yeah, we have to be... I mean, look at yeah. our history. We need to be very... When, when, um, if we go down in history, those who are perceived not mm -hmm. suspicious. Uh -huh. I mean, that's why we are colonized, right? You're right. Yeah, we took mirrors and gave gold. I mean, and mm. such. Yeah. So we have suspicious But friends. we have moved on. The rest of the world has moved. Asia was also colonized, mm -hmm. and they have moved on. They do not allow their colonization or their to history of colonies to hold them back. Mm -hmm. So when, you, when I come up with a concussion, and I say that this concussion can treat COVID-19, why am I suspicious not to test it? And I want to start selling it. I want to start giving it to people before it is tested. Look at the way we, we, we test things 
in conventional medicine. You get a drug, I don't just come up with a drug and I say, oh, this drug will cure, and I start marketing it. I have to test it. It goes through phases. I want to see the side effects. I want to see the doses. I want to see uh, whether it's actually treating the disease I want it to treat. But the problem with our concussion is they come and they just say, yes, it treats. They start selling it. And if you ask them to test it, they don't want to test it. So that makes it very, very difficult. I know, for example, the Madagascan uh, concussion that came up right at the beginning of COVID-19, mm -hmm. there has been a lot of urge, including from the African Union. We have the, something called the African CDC, the African Center for Disease Control in Addis Ababa, has been urging that we test to see whether that product works or not. But up to now, the just countries buying it, the countries that I don't want to name that have been uh, boasting that it is that concussion that has helped them. So it has been marketed, sold, without any evidence that it works. My urge would be if there, is a, if there could be some collaboration with our herbalists or people who are developing this concussion so that they can just be able to test it, so that we can be able to say, is it really working or is it not working? Right now, we cannot say for sure. We are taking it nine money, coin money, because I think uh, mm. we were doing a survey towards the end of the year about how commodity prices were behaving. Mm -hmm. And some commodities, and especially the, in, in, in agri, in, yeah. in the agri mm. value chain, mm -hmm. actually sold. And I'm talking about the lemons, mm -hmm. the garlic, mm -hmm. and the ginger. It recorded high sales which is very unlikely and it has all been pegged to the thought that if you take lemon and ginger plus garlic then through the morubaini you, you, mm. you'll be okay there is that so there was quite an uptake mm. for that mm. now now that we found ourselves in this situation as as not just as a country but also as a globe from a person from, from a view of research and virology as it is what do you think is going to happen we already have a vaccine yes we are still at what point, give us timelines, because issues of timelines have come up. And people, when we are rolling out across the globe the issue of the vaccine, and I'd want to quote uh, from one person who sent this on Twitter, how come the world has a vaccine for COVID and none for cancer or HIV and AIDS? And now this brought us to, okay, this was done too fast, too soon, those questions. What informed that maybe probably? Yeah, so I think your, your viewers need to understand that diseases are different. Um, the virus that causes HIV is completely different from the virus that causes uh, COVID-19. Uh, cancers have very different, in fact, many, many people just confuse. We, we keep on talking about cancer, but cancer is a very broad thing. There's cancer of the eye, there's cancer of the breast, there's cancer Literally of the there's everything. cancer. They're, they're very different. Yes. And what causes them is also very different. Cigarette smoking is associated with cancer of the lungs. Um, an, an infection called human papilloma virus is associated with exactly. cancer. So when, when people talk about cancer, it is really, really, that people are really mistaken. Mm -hmm. Cancer is a very broad, very, very, very broad disease. And there are many cancers that uh, people have made a lot of progress. We have a, a vaccine, a hepatitis B vaccine, yes. that will protect you from getting a cancer of the liver. We have hepatitis, uh, we have a, a, a uh, human papilloma virus yes. vaccine that will protect. So when we say that there is no vaccine for cancer, what do you really say? Yeah, good you question. They, 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 yeah, we yeah. are addressing yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what do you that mean? Have been asked in, yeah. in terms of, you know, it was yeah. too quick. The world has been yeah. too quick. So to now that this, I want to come back to this too quick thing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, one, one, what will make you develop a vaccine faster than other is the disease condition. Uh, so the virus that is causing it or the bacteria that is causing it. If you understand it, quickly, then you'll be able to develop a vaccine quickly. So this, va this virus, we understood it very, very quickly. Using modern uh, uh, technologies, we've been able to, to, to do something called sequencing. But besides that, I just want to assure your viewers that no step has been skipped in developing vaccines for COVID. Oh, that's All a the vaccines. That's a relief. Oh, yes, they have been tested. Because there's been animals. a lot of conspiracy theory that this is yeah. a culling, um, culling process yeah. especially targeting asia and africa thank you for that clarity uh, clarification that no step we yeah. do not cut corners there is no step we have that suspic has. africa is suspicious yeah. suspic there, there is no <laughs> step minds. there's no step that has been jumped now let me just the final point on this quick business mm -hmm. eh? um so also technologies that we have used in developing the covid vaccines 
have been based on technologies that have been used, so we are not reinventing something. Uh, we have um, then modified uh, or, or used modern technologies to hasten the process of developing a vaccine. I ask people, in the 1940s, it would take three months to make one vehicle, okay? I would have the same argument and say, nowadays, you can make a thousand vehicles on assembly line using modern day technology. I would want to see somebody who says <laughs> that these vehicles are that not as made, good. Yeah. They have been made too quickly. Uh, oh, how come when we'd make one car in three months, now we're able to make a thousand cars in a single day okay. using modern technology? Mm -hmm. So the world is evolving. Technologies are improving. And so we cannot be stuck with the way things used to be done is the way things have to be done. As long as we ensure that we have taken all the measures to ensure that these vaccines are safe, there is no cause for alarm. Uh -huh. Now we found ourselves at a point where I'm trying to get more feedback because mm -hmm. this is live and we welcome feedback from our views. Uh, just in case you tune in, in, we're talking about the state of COVID uh, in the country in light of the new variant as well as, you know, the rollout of the vaccination. Remember, we received two consignments last week and government has been rolling out, uh, you know, the vaccination exercise uh, even in, uh, you know, the devolved units there. So we're talking to... Um, Professor Walter Jauko, who is a vaccine expert and a leading uh, research scientist and virologist, director of CAVI, an institute of clinical research at the University of Nairobi. If you have questions in regard to, you know, the matters of COVID as well as, you know, you have reservations as to why you would or wouldn't take, actually you wouldn't take the jab well, this is a platform we are addressing that. Now talking about dressing issues, um, Prof, we've had the term vaccination and inoculation being used interchangeably and i understand they differ they differ in meaning maybe you can elaborate on that or rather clarify on that aspect so so the, the inoculation is just getting the jab the mm -hmm. vaccination what we, what we the vaccine does then is to stimulate the two ways that the vaccine works it uh, stimulates your body to produce antibodies. Antibodies are substances that the body forms with the aim of fighting a germ that it has seen. So they're very specific. So if my body has seen germ A, it will only produce antibodies against germ A. But if it is exposed to germ B, it will be infected because it has no antibodies against germ B. So that is one of the basis, by the way, of being able to say whether your body has been exposed to a particular germ. Do you remember at the beginning you said that you believe that many people who have uh, been infected with COVID and they didn't know it. The only way we can be able to tell, if we look into their blood and we find that uh, there are some antibodies against uh, COVID, then we know their body, the body must have been exposed to the, to the COVID vi causing virus. The body doesn't just decide to make antibodies. <laughs> so when you get a vaccine, it then vaccination then means that you become immunized it produces these antibodies mm -hmm. but there's another arm of the body that fights infection it is called the cellular arm of the body what that means it produces cells and the cells that fight germs are white blood That's cells it. so you can have a vaccine that then stimulates a particular specialized group of white blood cells to fight vaccination uh, to fight the germ mm -hmm. So when you have antibodies against the germ or this particular specialized white cells against the germ, we say you've been immunized against those conditions. Mm -hmm. Very well said. Now let's talk about something that we're all worried about, mm -hmm. the new variant. Mm -hmm. Well, we have watched a lot of documentaries, mm -hmm. films when, you know, even people have started saying now that we are moving to world Z. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've watched that mm -hmm. particular film, but there's a lot of anxiety with the new variant. Help us understand when we say the new variant, is it a mutation or exactly what is it informed by? You know, just clarify. Okay. So mutations re lead to variants. The variant is something just from the English word yeah. a variety. So you have now a new variety. So that's a variant. What causes the variant is that the viruses keep on multiplying. 
The problem with most many viruses is that they make mistake when they are multiplying. So their babies don't look like the mothers, okay? Oops. So that when that happens, then we say now these babies are a new variant. They are different from the from the from the, the, the parents, so to speak. Now what happens in viruses is that they make they don't it's not a whole they don't change completely. It's just a part of it that changes. Now for COVID-19, there is a part uh, of the, on the surface of the virus, uh, there is something called a spike protein. You don't need to know that, but it's just part of the, the, the virus. It's called a spike protein. When it is multiplying, they make a mistake. And when they make a mistake, the, the mistake is not fatal. But if the mistake becomes major, so that now there is a difference, a significant difference from in that spike protein, we say that that is now a new variant, okay? Mm -hmm. So there are three major variants that have occurred at the moment. We have the UK variant, we, we, the UK, UK strain, and then the South African one, and then there's one from Brazil. These are the three that people are closely oh, watching. Up. Let's start. The UK? UK, South African, mm -hmm. and Brazilian. And Brazil. But there are others. These are the major ones. So in the UK, in the US itself, we have the New York, uh, we have Boston, we have uh, Californian, but they are not that important compared to these three that I've already mentioned. Mm -hmm. So what the world is checking to see, what is the significance or importance of this virus? So one thing we know is that the virus tend to be easily spread. They are spreading faster than the old variant. Mm -hmm. And that brings us back to the South African issue that you asked, why is it that South Africa has yeah. been hit more, more than other parts of the world? It could probably be because their variant is one that spreads much easier. The worry that people have had also about this virus is will it cause more severe disease than uh, the old variant? But to date, there is no evidence that this virus uh, cause more severe disease. The third worry is, will this virus escape the, vi the vaccine that we are currently using? And that is the main issue. Yes, but that to date, there is no evidence that they would escape. There have been some studies uh, in, the so in South Africa. They looked at it and they saw that there is the, there's a possibility that it is not as covered uh, by the vaccine. Uh, compared to the old variant. But these are more studies are still being done mm -hmm. uh, to be able to see whether that is the case or not. So at the moment, it is important that any country that is using these uh, vaccines or developing new vaccines, we test them against this major virus. And that is going to happen. So the Kenyan government keeps on monitoring to see whether we are having this South African variant, the UK variant, the Brazilian variant, or if indeed we are having a new variant. Mm -hmm. And remember, uh, one of um, you know uh, what we call uh, you know everyday daily updates on COVID. Uh, I think the Ministry of Health confirmed that we have a variant. They didn't go to the details because I'm just learning from you that you have three: the UK, the Brazil, and the South Africa. At this mm -hmm. point, I'm very much worried about the Brazil with what is happening in Brazil. It's getting out of hand. Mm -hmm. Now we are here and we hear of this variant. Now the measures that we have, you know, masking washing our hands, social distancing. You've walked through mm -hmm. the streets. Mm -hmm. People are barely masking correct. Mm -hmm. In light of this development, whoa. Mm -hmm. What is your comment? I'm talking from point of research. You are in the know. You have seen the situation mm -hmm. on ground. What we have on paper or what we are saying here really doesn't matter when it gets to ground. People are still squeezing in mm -hmm. the PSVs. People are even in the queues. In the, no one is keeping, I mean, yeah. Is this a time bomb? Is it okay, time? so it's, it's true, but it's a, it's a human nature. Uh, I think it's a, very, uh, it's a very challenging thing to sustain control measures, and it's not just for COVID. Uh, human beings need to be repeatedly reminded, uh, repeatedly reminded that uh, things are not under control yet. Uh, we saw that with HIV. Uh, HIV, when it first came, the countries that really fought it very, very hard and reduced its transmission, years later, they are the countries that started seeing new infections because people become complacent. They think, oh, this thing now is no it's longer a problem. Yeah. We can go back to our usual. And it is the same thing with COVID. When it came, uh, when people are being told to wash their hands, to keep social distancing, to not to shake hands, to wear masks, 
people are very, very religious in doing that. But over a period of time, unless that uh, messaging is sustained and people really uh, see that the condition has not been controlled so that they maintain it, the tendency of human nature is to relax. And that is where the problem is. So we are having a third wave, and I, it's largely because, just it say, people don't wear masks anymore. Uh, people uh, believe in, you know, you go to pol political rallies, and I look at it on TV, and I just shudder, because many people close to it, each it other. Makes, it makes you well. uncomfortable, Very. especially being, you know, within the value chain. Yes. Like, yeah. guys, you can see, you can, you can see, see the, the COVID problem. actually yes, getting see. transmitted. You can see that must problem. be something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, as we come to a close, maybe you can give us a rundown as to what to look out for in as far as the variant is concerned. I understand that other different symptoms that one can look out for that, you know, we can help inform our viewers this morning what they need other than just the headache, the, run the running nose and such. What else? With the okay, new so the symptoms are not dependent on the variant. The, the symptoms are really basically the same. So you have a cough, you have a, 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 a sore throat, you have a running nose, uh, you have fever, you have joint uh, pains. Uh, and, and joint general body weakness, you have uh, loss of smell and uh, loss of taste. Um, so those are the common presentations. Yeah, we, met, we had uh, last week someone saying discoloration of your toes and that got us very worried and worked out. Yeah, so, so the thing about COVID, you know, many times we hear it being called a novel disease. There are some things that we keep on learning. Oh. Uh, and the fact that you see two or three people with a particular condition, you don't add it on the list. Eh? <laughs> what we're talking about are the common, the commonalities that we have with people who have had COVID-19, and those are the ones that we've listed. Mm -hmm. Very well said. I'd want to give you a few minutes to just appeal to those people, you know, those people that you see mm -hmm. who are not masking, who are not social distancing. This is your opportunity. Kindly address them. Maybe they'll, you know, as you said, we may, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, Kenyans, people generally have to be reminded over and over again that things are not as normal. Okay, so the, my message is this, that COVID is real. Um, I've had people in my interaction, I've had people saying, oh, they don't know anybody personally who has suffered from COVID. Believe it, take it from me. I have lost colleagues uh, from COVID. I've uh, seen uh, relatives uh, infected by COVID. And so COVID is real. Uh, you don't have to wait for it to happen to you, for, for you to experience. So they say that there are two ways of learning. You can learn from your own experience or you can learn from other people's experience. And the second one is much better. So COVID is real. Keep yourself uh, uh, safe as much as you can. Keep your social distancing. Uh, wash your hands, sanitize, uh, wear a mask. Let's fight this thing together. I will not water that down. I'll just take one statement out of it. There are two ways to learn via your own personal experience, which the way things like, look like, you might not. It's like playing Russian roulette at that point. Or you learn from someone else's experience. And we have the numbers. We have updates every day. So COVID is real. It's a wrap uh, for Good Morning Kenya this morning, being Monday the 15th of uh, March 2021. Some of the developing stories that I'll be keenly focusing on is that the commencement of the oral um, case, uh, and we're talking about the Kenya-Somali maritime border, begins today. So we'll be keeping tabs on that as well as looking at what is, go is shaping you know, the political scene as we talk about matters of BBI and well, as well as 2022 succession politics. My guest this morning has been Professor Walter Jaoko, a vaccine expert as well as a leading research scientist and virologist. I'm Regina Manyara. I wish you a pleasant day ahead.